with Daniel Craig Bond Saga in 007 minutes. Everything you need to know about the story so far. Spoiler alert. After executing an MI6 mole and pounding the living daylights out of his enemy contact, James Bond receives his 00 status, license to kill, and a banging personal theme song from Chris Cornell. You know my name. In Uganda, we meet the mysterious Mr. White, who has arranged for a meeting between rebel leader Stephen Obano and terrorist financier Le Chief. Le Chief takes Obano's cash and uses it to short shares in an aviation company called Skyfleet. Meanwhile, in Madagascar, Bond is on the trail of a bomb maker with links to terrorism. After a frantic foot chase, Bond chooses to execute him rather than let him die another day, much to the chagrin of M, and follows a clue from the bomb maker's phone to the Bahamas. There he finds Alex Dimitrios, a known associate of Le Chiffre, whom he investigates by taking his car in a poker game and sleeping with his wife. Bond then follows Dimitrios to Miami, kills him, and foils Le Chiffre's plan to have a prototype airliner destroyed to sabotage Skyfleet stock and make millions. The Chief arranges a high-stakes poker game at the Casino Royale to recoup his enormous loss. After finding Dimitrios' wife dead, MI6 gets Bond into the game, hoping that if Le Chief loses, he'll turn to them for protection with info on his criminal clients. Bond is partnered with Treasury agent Vespa Lind and meets local contact Rene Mathis when he arrives. During a break in the game, Bond and Vespa fend off an attack by Urbano, looking to retrieve his money from Le Chief. Bond then loses his initial stake, but is able to buy back in via a fellow player, Felix Leiter, a CIA agent. After surviving being poisoned, Bond wins the tournament, but Le Chiffre abducts Vespa and uses her as bait to capture Bond. Le Chiffre scratches Bond's thunderballs for a while to force him to hand over the money, but he's executed by Mr. White, who suddenly appears. While recovering, Bond reveals to Vespa he's in love with her and emails his resignation to M. Bond and Vespa head to Venice, but Bond discovers Vespa has stolen the winnings. That's a shame. Bond chases Vespa and a group of unknown men into a building which begins sinking into the water during a firefight. Bond kills the men, but Vespa locks herself in a lift, allowing herself to drown. White leaves the scene with the money. Bond learns Vespa was being blackmailed by the same organization behind Le Chiffre, who apparently kidnapped her boyfriend, but he's able to track and snatch White thanks to a phone number Vespa left for Bond in her phone. The name's Bond. James Bond. We next find Bond in a car chase, with White tied up in a boot of his battered Aston Martin. Bond and M begin to interrogate White regarding his organization when M's own bodyguard attacks her. Bond pursues the double agent and kills him, but White escapes. MI6 discovers the bodyguard had a contact in Haiti called Slate. Bond travels to Haiti to find Slate, who he stabs to death, before discovering Slate was a hitman hired by Dominic Green to kill a woman named Camille. With Slate dead, the hit doesn't happen, so instead Green hands her over to Medrano, an exiled general who Green is helping install as the new president of Bolivia in exchange for a seemingly useless chunk of desert. Camille was actually using Green to get to Medrano, who murdered her family, but is unable to kill him before she's rescued by Bond. What the hell are you doing? You're welcome! Green meets with the CIA to strike a deal for any oil he finds in the desert, Bond then follows Green to an opera in Austria, where he gatecrashes a high-level discussion between bigwigs of the mysterious organization, Quantum. After a quick running battle, Bond is ordered back to England but refuses, instead heading to Bolivia via Italy to pick up Mathis, who knows the chief of police in La Paz. Bond is met by British consulate official Fields, who is supposed to arrest him, but instead has sex with him after he can't find a pen. Come and help me look. Bond heads to a party hosted by Green where he meets Mathis and the police chief. After leaving with Camille, however, he's confronted by bent Bolivian cops who lead him to the boot of the car to find Mathis, assaulted and dumped there to frame him. Bond kills the cops after they shoot Mathis in the back. The next day, Bond and Camille are inspecting the land Quantum Want by air when they're shot down. After bailing out, they discover it's not oil Quantum Wants, it's water. They're building underground dams and creating a drought. Back at the hotel, Bond finds M waiting for him and that Fields has been murdered. M orders Bond arrested, but he escapes and learns from Lighter that Medrano and Green are finalizing the terms of their deal at a desert hotel. Bond and Camille attack and Bond kills the police chief, while Camille kills Medrano. Bond leaves Green to perish alone in the middle of the desert after learning all about Quantum. Bond and Camille share a kiss before they part, but because first base is as far as they get, Camille survives the film. Tomorrow Never Dies, just women who boink Bond. Bond then tracks down and arrests Vespa's former boyfriend, who is actually a member of Quantum who seduces women and then blackmails them. M informs Bond that Green was found shot dead in the desert as Bond drops Vespa's necklace into the snow. In Istanbul and well and truly back on Her Majesty's Secret Service, Bond and an MI6 agent called Eve are chasing a killer called Patrice, who has stolen a drive containing the identities of NATO agents embedded in terrorist groups around the world. 
As Bond fights Patrice atop a train, Eve is ordered to take a shot but hits Bond, who is presumed dead. Following the incident, M is pressured by Intelligence Committee Chairman Gareth Mallory to retire. You're firing me. M refuses, but shortly afterwards she receives a threat via a computer breach and an explosion rips through MI6. Bond, proof you only live twice, hears of the attack and returns to London. Although he fails a battery of evaluations, M sends him back into the field when they get a lead on Patrice. Before he leaves, Bond receives a special palm print activated gun and radio from Q, MI6's new quartermaster. After having a view to a kill made by Patrice in Shanghai, Bond kills him and tracks his employer to Macau. There he meets Severine, whom he saw working as Patrice's accomplice during the hit he witnessed. Severine agrees to take him to a boss if Bond agrees to kill him. After instantly losing his cool new personalized gun to a tubby bodyguard and a giant lizard, Good luck with that. Bond boards Severine's yacht and makes love to her, thereby condemning her to certain death. Bond is then taken prisoner by former MI6 agent and cyber terrorist Raul Silva, who has a personal vendetta against M. Silva kills the doomed Severine, but Bond uses Q's fancy new radio to bring in the cavalry and arrest Silva. Displaying a surprisingly blinding lack of foresight, Q plugs the super hacker's laptop into MI6's system, where it completely unsurprisingly hacks their entire network, and allows Silver to escape and continue his plan to assassinate M. Bond saves M with the help of Mallory and Eve, and escorts her to Skyfall, his childhood home in Scotland, where he sets a trap for Silver. Bond, M, and Skyfall gamekeeper Kincaid fight off Silver's men, and Bond kills Silver. But even though she and Bond never slept together, M succumbs to wounds received during the battle and dies in Bond's arms. Following M's funeral, Eve Moneypenny retires from fieldwork to become secretary for Mallory, the new head of MI6. Are you ready to get back to work? With pleasure. And that brings us to Spectre, which is in theatres now, and marks the first appearance of the Sinister Spectre organisation in the official series since 1971's Diamonds Are Forever. We're not going to spoil it for you, but if you're paying attention to the last seven minutes, it should make slightly more sense.